Greetings YouTube. This is an LG uh, air conditioner. This is a big hefty model. This is a 10,000 BTU um, air conditioner. It's not the kind that you take in and out of your window every uh, year. It's just too large. In fact, you install the case separately from the actual unit and you put the unit into it after the case is installed. And this just barely fit in this window because this is a replacement window. And if you come down here, you can see that this is the replacement window here and it's not actually touching it. So the unit is sitting on the outside on these. And these are actually meant, they have a threaded hole here. It actually comes with screws in case um, you don't have a, a replacement window. So that would come all the way down to rest on like an original um, jam. Because um, they want the, the unit to be tipped out slightly to the outside. It is. This this here is lower than the inside. That's what they want. Um, but the inside, which you can't really see here, is sitting on a piece of square stock tubing. It's one inch square steel tubing. I was kind of bummed to have to use it because it's really nice tubing. And I've used some of it for um, weapons projects already. But it was the perfect size and it was easy to cut. I could just, you know, whack a piece off downstairs on my chop saw. I have a metal chop saw downstairs. And then install it here so that the weight of this unit, which is significant, um, is sitting on that square stock tubing and here, so it's not actually touching the uh, replacement window at all. But I do have these big gaps here. So I'm gonna, the first part of this project I'm doing today is gonna be using this piece of foam here to get in here and fill up these gaps. And I can cut this to uh, easily with a pair of uh, Wiss shears. I love my Wiss shears. And uh, once I have that installed, the next thing I want to do, this is a little more ambitious. So I'm going to mount a piece of plywood here. It's going to start at that right there. I'm going to put a hinge on either side of this window. And the hinge is going to be what attaches the plywood to this at the top of the structure and then i'm going to put two supports on either side probably here um coming up to the to the uh plywood so i want to keep the plywood off of the unit but i'm going to make the plywood 36 inches long that sounds long because it's going to come out pretty far past this unit but the reason i'm doing that is this is the south facing side of my building this thing gets direct sun all day long, all year long. I mean, not, I mean, it's that some shade from the, the bump out here, but for the bulk of the day, it gets a lot of direct sunlight. And that's not good for an AC unit that's trying to, you know, do its job. So by giving it some shade that will help the unit uh, perform better and put less wear and tear on the motor and things like that. And additionally, additionally it will prevent as, as snow load on top, because we have a case for this, like a, a covering that you put on it. So that will help insulate it uh, somewhat along with the foam I'm going to install. But uh, I want to keep the snow off the top. So by putting on this piece of plywood here, the uh, snow will be hopefully sliding off because again, it's the south side. So it should warm up enough that the snow should slide off the plywood I'm going to install. Um, and uh, even if it doesn't, it will still not be sitting on top, directly on top of the uh, unit itself. And because this is uh, going to be held by f in four points with four different hinges, uh, two on either uh, side of the window on the top and two on the bottom, uh, this should be very sturdy. Uh, and the nice thing about this project is the only thing I have to pay for are the hinges and the hardware to hold the hinges to the plywood and to the bracket, the braces I'm going to be using. Because the braces are channel, uh, L channel I got for free. Um, the plywood I'm going to be putting on the top as the coverage is free. It was both of us salvage stuff. And the foam that I just showed you is free. Got that from work with that stuff we get back in some of our, our packaging. We just throw it away. So I can use it for insulation. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is insulate the, those spaces. And then it's going to be uh, getting the plywood cut to size. And my wife is going to paint it for me while I am working on the hinges because I'm going to have to modify 
four of the hinges need to be modified. Um, two of them are, are going to be fine as they are commercial. I'll show you that when I when I get around to that stage. But yeah, so this is going to be um, uh, covering this window, or rather protecting this one, protecting this AC unit in this window um, from both sun and uh, from snow. So this is the piece of plywood I'm using, and we've already cut the edges off. The cuts aren't perfect, I did it freehand, following the, the grooves by eye. Um, but they're close enough. Um, this is not laser accuracy. But I want this cut to be a little closer, so I have a straight board set up. It's a five inch offset between the edge of my circular saw and the, uh, the blade. Uh, this is clamped to a sawhorse, and my wife is going to be down here on this end so she can help me um, control it as I'm making the cut all the way across, which I'm going to have to do and reach as far as I can, stop and go over and finish it on the other side. It's going to be a little awkward, but it is what it is. My arms aren't long enough to do this. Uh, but I'm trying to clamp everything down as much as possible, make sure everything's as secure as possible so that we have... If, least chance of um, accidents. I've got my goggles on and I have my hearing protection and gloves and I forgot to put my shop shoes on but I'm not doing metal working so it's just sawdust. Uh, when I do the metal working later then I have to have my shop shoes. Alrighty so finished cutting this and this is going to be the piece we're saving and this will be the piece I, I use for something else I guess. Um, and uh, then since we're painting it it doesn't matter that it has the red marker on it. All right, time for some sawing. Greetings, we are back. Okay, so the piece of uh, plywood is cut. Um, my wife is outside sanding the corners and the edges and stuff before painting. You'll probably hear that in the background. Um, and I had the wooden straight edge on the wrong side, so we had to move it to the other side of the red line at one and a half inches instead of five inches, because I forgot the motors on the five inch side. Like I said, best laid plans of mice and men. Now. These are the hinges I'm going to be using. So, this will go into the wall. This will go into the plywood on top. The so two top pieces are going to be like that. And the reason I'm using hinges, again, they're self-leveling. I, I don't have to bend anything. They'll bend at the angle I want them to be at. Um, so these don't have to get modified. Three screws in the building, three bolts. I'll be using quarter 20 bolts because they fit through these holes perfectly. Uh, quarter 20 bolts. Uh, to hold the whole thing together. And I'm going to be using this stuff as my two uprights. Um, the problem is, is that if I want to bolt this to this, that hole is in the middle. There is no hole in the middle here. So I'm going to have to make a hole in the middle. So first of all, I have to... Uh, probably going to want to go for... that spacing right there. So I'm going to figure out what the spacing is between this, this whole center of that, and the center of this oblong. And then I will use that as my as my designation. Um, or I may just figure out what, if, if these are, figure out if this is a, a nice set even distance. If they are, I may just figure out what that is and then transfer it over here so I have some options about moving it where I want to go. Because the bolts with the washers on them will be able to uh, hold this clamp just together quite nicely. I have quarter 20 hex bolts in galvanized steel uh, that are three quarters of an inch long. The plywood's about a half inch, I think, or five, eight, or, or five eighths. So the whole thing will be fine with three quarter inch bolts, um, which go for 13 cents a piece, I found out today. I didn't buy a whole box. I didn't really need a hundred of them, I think is what they came, came to. I only needed 20 of them. Um, so, the next thing is going to drill four of these hinges, which I have here with me, figure out the distance, make the marks, drill the holes, and the holes are going to be slightly larger. I think the smallest broaching bit I have is 5 sixteenths. So I'll put a 5 sixteenths hole in there, and then we're good for the mounting it to the wall. Then I can take the measurements to figure out how long these need to be, because that's the, that's the one thing I don't know yet. I have all the markings set on the hinges, and I gotta tell you, I really love this marking tool here. I've done a review on it. 
on my channel. It is just so useful, so easy. Just hold that point, pull up, the spring snaps it back down, it leaves a mark exactly where you want it to be. Very happy with this. I discovered that the spacing for these holes is all one and a half inches. So one and a half inches on center from hole to hole to hole. So that works perfectly. So now I should be able to set this up anywhere I want to on this um, piece of channel stock. Um, L bracket, I should say. And uh, so the next thing is going to be go see if I can use my step stool to, to do this project and not my ladder because the step stool is easier to work with. And then mount two hinges to the building that don't have these holes. So the last two hinges that I didn't have to modify, they're the ones that are going to be on the top of this shield, uh, which at the moment my wife is outside painting. I've achieved an impasse. I hope I'm not covering the mic. I got these three in. This is a spacer block, so I lift it up away from the building a little bit, kind of compensating for the thickness of this these aluminum siding, or the aluminum, the aluminum siding. Sorry about the cars, there is a street next to me. This one is into something solid. That's into something not so solid, and that's into nothing. So I need to find out, figure out what the heck is in there. Because I need these to be in further, because this is going to be holding a fair amount of weight on it when I'm done. Because that board's going to come right up here, and it ain't light. I mean, it's going to have support in the bottom as well, but I would like these to be doing something. At the minute, they are not doing anything really. Well, this one's kind of, but this one is. This one's doing its job. So I'm going to try the other side and see if that one looks any better. And this project may have to just get stalled till next week because I'm not going to the hardware store on to tire drive. If I lose my momentum, I've had it. I'll poop out. So we're going to try the other side and see if the other side looks any better. And if they don't, then it's going to have to get to come back next week with some six inch. These are three inch. Try some. I may pick up some five inch. Try five inch. Let's see if the five inch hit anything. So I figured they'd be framing around this goddamn window. But apparently there isn't any real framing around this window. I shouldn't be shocked by that. This house was not constructed by geniuses. Same problem on this side. This one's in something. That one's kind of in something. This one's in nothing. I'm beating, I'm admitting defeat. I'll have to come back at this next weekend. I'm too damn tired. I worked a six day week. I haven't slept. I've been up since 9.40 last night and it's, what the heck time is it anyway? Hold on a second. It's almost 3 p.m. So I've been up for a hell of a long time. Um, so again, I'm gonna admit defeat. It's not going anywhere, not hurting nothing. At least the board's painted, so. That's, that's one less thing we have to worry about for next week. So next week we have to get some five inch screws and try that. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to just pray that with the bottom support and the top support that the combination will give us enough lift and enough security to hold it in place. Because at the moment these things are, these things are pretty darn secure as it is. Um, and they're gonna have support from the bottom, so I'm not, this is, this is not carrying all the weight. This is just basically holding it in place. The bottom ones are gonna be the ones holding all the weight, and they're gonna be coming off of here, probably. Oh yeah, this, this stuff right here, see this? There was a gasket that came with this, and we went to put it in, and the wind caught it, and it came out and hit this, and it just, thunk, thunk, and it was, that was it. It was stuck, it did not come back off again. So I have to scrape that off my house. Thanks. Um, but at least I got this done. Got that at least prepped. So the holes are where I want them. And that one's in the bottom one's not coming out, so it's gonna so it's gonna hold everything in place. So I don't have to monkey, monkey, um, monkey around with it next time I have at it. Just hope I can use the longer screws to fight, find something. I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do. Maybe get some adhesive? You know, like some construction adhesive and screwed it in there along with the screws, that might help. Couldn't hurt, you know what I mean? Couldn't hurt. Alrighty, I guess we'll find that, figure this out next week. 
Like I said, I'm too tired. So now it's time to clean the nest, clean up the tools, put everything away. So I don't lose anything. Oh, and I discovered there's a little current channel up here. I have no idea what this little channel's for, but it holds drill bits and screws really well. So I was very thankful for that. <laughs> Not its intended purpose, I'm sure. I have no idea what its intended purpose is, but it, it was excellent for holding screws and drill bits. I guess and there's my Makita drill. I'm a big Makita fan. Alrighty, so hopefully next week we'll be able to finish this project. And we're back. Alrighty, so as I pointed out the last time I was here, these top two screws are not doing anything. My wife suggests that I try anchors, and that's not a bad idea. So I am going to remove the top two screws, leave the bottom one in place because the bottom one's actually doing something. Boy, is it bright out here. Sorry. Um, I'm not a big fan of sun. And I'm going to try using one of those in one of those holes. And the, the drill bit that you need for this is already included in the kit. Um, so you drill a hole, you put the plastic insert in, and then you screw in the, uh, the screw and see how it works. So we're going to see how that works. And I think these things are, what are these things rated to? They're called heavy duty. That may be rated for 50 pounds a pop, but I'm not positive. Even if it's 30 pounds a pop, I don't care. Because there's two of them, and this board only weighs about six pounds. And there's going to be six screws holding this in, two actually doing something already, and then four anchors. And I would probably be using some of the anchors down here when I put the second set of, which will be the, the horizontal or angled supports to hold up the other side, the other end of the, of the awning. So I got a little hammer here. It's my favorite stubby hammer to help me put the little plastic things in place. So now I need to get my uh, bit out and my screw out, my, my get those screws out, and then drill the holes that I need to give this a try. My wife was correct, that did work. Though I did have to open up the hole in the siding to a 5 16th because the plastic sleeves are normally going into like drywall or something like that that has a little bit of give and uh, obviously the aluminum siding does not and it was not going in well. It also has sharp edges that like a, even a hole in concrete wouldn't have had. So getting them in was a bit of a trick, but I did. And so now I have both of those in. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side um, and see if it works as well. And here we have my wife offering her ever helpful support, holding up the panel while I go and get something that I forgot in the basement. So thanks to my wife's help, the top of this is now secured. We only use two screws on each, two, two bolts on each side, because the other one would have been too close to the edge for my taste. But I got four bolts holding this thing on, so that's plenty. Now I need to set up the last two hinges for the wall, and I'm gonna set them in here, and I'm gonna use, this is a spacer block, set the hinge with this as against the, the building and then that will determine its location. Um, and once I get those two in, hopefully they'll go in more easily than the top two did, because now I know what I'm facing. I now know I may have to use those, uh, those uh, anchors rather than just screws. But I did get lucky in the first two. Maybe I'll get lucky on this one, and at least one of the actual three-inch screws will fit, will work. That would be nice. Okay, so. Next, the next thing is putting the next two hinges in place. So the bracket, the two hinges are now in place. And now this is gonna go like this. It's cut to length. So now I need to bolt it here and then bolt a hinge to this so I can then locate it for the drilling the holes on this end. And once I get that done, um, all I need to do is put the second one in and this project will be complete. And there we have the finished awning. Now, I should point out that this is severely over-engineered, which is a common occurrence for mine, over-engineering things. Um, so, two bolts here, two bolts there, three screws um, at the top, two using anchors and one going into the house itself. Down here, I had to use three anchors 
Um, and one of, oddly, one of these is in something solid. The other two, I think, may just be sitting in siding. But remember that the bottom ones are under compression, so they're not really going anywhere. And again, this thing weighs like six, maybe seven pounds. It's not, it's not that, not that much. Now I did notice this. I fixed this corner, but I did put this one in first. And by the time I had it bolted in place, and I noticed it, I'm like, I'm not taking that back off to grind it off. So I told my wife if that was an issue for her, I'll bring my angle grinder out and I'll clean it up for her. Um, but this one, I was I was able to clean it up after I made the cut and, and I deburred the edges on my belt sander. Um, so this is severely over I mean, this is not going anywhere. This is definitely not going anywhere. I'm quite happy with it. Oh, apparently I didn't tighten that screw up. Well, I'm still out here. I can fix that. Um, I did these two. <laughs> I forgot to do these two. All right, I'll do those two and then I'll, I'll wrap this up. But yeah, this is not going anywhere. And we do have a insulated cover for the outside, which my wife obviously has not put on yet. Um, I've already insulated the, the gap between the unit and the building. And this is this deep of insulation. The bottom one is only this deep of insulation, but it's fully insulated top and all the way around. There's nothing on the top. Um, and nothing a whole lot I can do about that, I don't think. The window is coming all the way down to touch it. So I don't I don't know if I can do anything on that. Well, I'll look at it from the inside. Maybe I can make some improvements, we'll see. Um, but we have, not only do we have an insulated cover for the outside, but we also have an insulated cover for the inside. So this should get the absolute minimum air penetration come a cold weather. I guess we're gonna find out. We, we've, this is the first year we've had this thing. So, um, so this is the first time we've used this thing, so we'll find that out. So, um, thankfully I noticed that, so I'm going to tighten those two up right now, and then I'm going to call this good, because I am really damn tired, and i got a mess out here of tools i got to collect and figure out which ones go down in the shop, and which go upstairs in my toolbox in the, in the apartment. Um, because there are tools I keep up there for stuff, and there are tools I keep in the basement for stuff. Um, and never sh twain shall the tools meet. Um, did I... I just noticed that that screw is silver and that screw is white and that that came that way these this is how the unit came well wow, I didn't notice that till just now it doesn't really matter to me in any shape way shape or form but intriguing that one's silver and one's white Ooh, that's life um, so yeah this is my awning for my LG, or my mother-in-law's LG 10,000 BTU uh, air conditioning unit. And when she finally moves out someday, for whatever reason, this is staying here. <laughs> the next tenant is going to get a free air HC, because I'm not moving this thing. It's not going anywhere. Um, and if I ever have to take this thing out of the wall, I will just use um, silicone uh, to fill in the holes I made, and it'll be all taken care of. You won't even notice it. Alrighty, so I hope that you found this interesting and you've enjoyed my severely over-engineered but very cheap um, level of security for my AC unit because the, the plywood was free, the two brackets, the two brackets, support brackets I used, the two angle irons right there, those were free. So all I had to do is pay for the, the hinges and the fasteners. And I already had the anchors. So this is a low cost. I probably get like 20 bucks in this, less than that probably, like 15 or 16 bucks in this. So, been successful, I had a good time, hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you on the next build.